This next model builder video is going to um, kick off a series that deals with one of the most important, useful, and you know downright wonderful components of model builder, which is the iterators. Um, iterators are really what take some of the stuff we learned in the last video, which is cool, you know, stringing together multiple tools that you use commonly, that's useful, or building sort of a parametized model that uh, a user could input uh, at their leisure. Um, very good, very basic, important, but you know, there's a there's sort of a ceiling. But iterator really kind of comes in and, and broadens what you can do by allowing you to do things like build a model and then set it to duplicate its process for every shape file you have in a folder, right? Suddenly something that might take you hours to do for a hundred shape files, you build one model and it runs automatically. Or something that moves through individual components of your data, you know, maybe something that moves through <coughs> uh, individual neighborhoods and does something different for each neighborhood. Or maybe a simulation where you want something to run five or ten or fifteen times and produce multiple results. That's what an iterator is. And so iterator is probably going to have uh, two or three videos to just walk through some of the component parts um, of it. There are a number of, of things that you'll see uh, for the iterator, but we're really going to focus on three. Um, you know that offer I think the best example of its power. And the first is four. And four is exactly as it sounds. It's just maybe insert a number, 5, 10, 15. And the iterator will run through that many times um, a program. Uh, a common use of this might be, um, you know, for example, let's say you're modeling uh, land use change over time. And, you know, so you have land use in year zero, but then you do something, you build maybe a building and because you built that building, that would then impact what the land use looks like in year two, right? And then more buildings you build in year two would impact what they look like in year three and so on and so forth. So that's four. Um, feature class, what we'll do next, but all of these are sort of the same. They're just using different inputs. What these ones do, data set, feature class, files, raster tables, is they take files. They take inputs and they iterate all of them. So think about this like I have a hundred shape files and I want to do the same thing to each of them. That's what iterate feature class is. And the final that can take a little bit longer to wrap your heads around but is awesome and, and, and sort of a real fantastic tool is feature selection. And this is the thing that would allow you to move individually through your data. Like you could move through each point in the crime sample and do something different to each. You could move through each neighborhood individually and do something different with each. A super useful tool when you know how to leverage it, and that'll be one of the last ones we show the video for. So but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate the feature, uh, or sorry, iterate, yeah, iterate feature classes. And the challenge I'm going to pose here is a simple one. In, in the data we have for today, I have a folder called Crime Months, and it has four types in it. It has April, February, January, and March. And I might want to actually run, um, you know, a density for each. I, I might want to sort of see what the kernel density and the hotspots are like for crime in each month. Um, you know, but I'd love to be able to do it automatically. I, rather than sort of run a density and then run a density and then run a density and then run a density, I'd rather just set up a template and tell my model to run the same process for every piece of data it finds here. Now, I'm only doing four, but imagine if this were 400, right? Maybe this was every month of crime for 10 years, and I wanted to be able to create something that would allow me to watch sort of the concentration change over time. So what we'll do here is we are going to bring in an iterator to start, and we're going to bring in the feature classes. So iterate feature classes. Uh, it's not, no inputs right now, so it's gray but there's sort of three component parts. You have name, which is critical, uh, but we don't have enough information to know what it is yet, so just know in your mind that I'm gonna to return to that and that that's probably the most important part of the iterator. 
you have this actual um, hexagonal thing here, which is uh, the shape of an iterator. Anytime you have this, it means that there's an iteration. And then you ultimately have the, um, the feature class. So double click to get the parameters. And this thing is really only going to want um, three possible inputs, but really only one matters. And it's this. This means, hey, what's the folder or what's the geo database within which you want me to run through um, the files? And we know, you know, if we're following along, it's that crime months folder. And so just navigate like you would uh, through your desktop and, and, and through each April 16th. Get down until you get to the crime months. Don't click into it, just select it. That's it. You're saying, hey, anything you find in crime months, do it. Uh, the next two can be helpful. Um, Wildcard would be you would type something in and then put um, an asterisk. And the purpose of wildcard is, like, let's say I had a 1,000 files and maybe, you know, I'm sharing them with, like, 10 other people who are loading data. And I have prefaced all of mine with the word Shea to let people know they're mine. Maybe I put the word Shea... Um, asterisk and then it would only do those files so it's just a way of if you have more data than you need it's a way of effectively letting you um, pare stuff down feature type is sort of similar and that would be you know hey if you only you know can only accept points and you, you might use that here right I know for a fact that the data in April 16th crime months is only points um, but if I know I'm gonna set something up <laughs> that's running density. Um, I might want to just make sure that I don't run into a trouble here where, you know, it tries to do density to a polygon, which can't happen. And finally, recursive. A recursive would just be folders within folders. So this would be if I have like one master folder that has 10 little folders that each have data in it, recursive would run through all of the folders. So, crime months popped up. That's letting me know, hey, I'm the folder that you're taking from. And then this is going to be the individual piece of data that you're iterating, right? It's going to start with February and then do Mar and then April and then May until you're finished. Now, still don't have enough information to know what name means yet, but it's going to be critical. Some of you may have already figured out why, but until we get to that point, I'm going to leave it right up here so that we know it's going to be important, but it's not sort of the core part of our model just yet. Okay, so iterating, uh, is too zoomed out, I have to zoom in a little there, there we go. Alright, so what do we want to do? Well, we want to do density, kernel density, make sure that you have spatial analyst toolbar installed or this isn't going to work. Take kernel, double click, I got my kernel here. Who am I going to do the kernel to? I'm going to do the kernel To that so I will take you and drag you in you're gonna be my point great I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna input the stuff so I want everything to be the same there's no population field uh, the output maybe I'll just call it you know uh, I'll save it in um, and I'll create an output 16 folder and I'll save it as my dens, you know, my dense, my, my density. And, you know, maybe I'll make the cell size 50 feet for each of them. And the search radius will do something maybe like 2,000 feet. And then the other thing is I'm going to come in here to environments and just make sure that they're all the same size. I'm going to say, hey, the processing extent is going to be this crime sample, just to make sure that my raster... Uh, everything sort of lines up right on top of each other. So I got everything I need. February, that's just the first one, but it's going to iterate through each. No population field. It's going to save itself as my dens. And, you know, the output's going to be, uh, self size is going to be 50. Uh, search radius is 2,000. Now, this would be good to go. Theoretically, I could run this tool and it would work. But it would not give me what I want. And here is the issue and the reason why name is absolutely critical. This tool is going to work, 
by coming into April 16th, coming into crime months, and moving through each. It'll do February, then it'll do January, then it'll do March, then it'll do April. For each one, it'll run a density. But for each one, it'll save it as my dens. And hopefully you see the problem here. No matter what you pick, what name you give to the file, it's always going to save over. And so what would happen is whatever file I do last would be the only thing that would save. It's just going to keep overwriting, and I'm only going to get one density. I'm going to get something called my dens, which, you know, I'm not sure which one it'll be. It'll be whatever the last one is. So it's almost like you need a way to inform the tool so that it knows, like, hey, if I'm using April, maybe I'll take something from that file, like a name or a letter or an indicator that I can use so that when I save and run the density on April, the output will say April. And then when I run the density on February, the output will run. And that's where name comes in. You're going to do this through a super excellent, powerful, useful concept in Model Builder called inline variable substitution. Super simple to do. You would put percent, name, percent. You can add other words if you want, dens, cheese, whatever. But what this means when the word name is between the percentages is it means I'll take whatever value is here. And the value here is going to depend on the iteration. So the first time when it's working with the February data, it'll be Febra. The second time, it'll be Jan. The third time, it'll be March. The fourth time, it'll be April. I'll get four files. Nothing will overwrite each other, and it will give me exactly what I need. If I change that name to Cheese, or Blargan, or Nine, I would simply have to make sure that I change this as well. Inline variable simply needs to match up with one of the variables exactly here to take its value as long as it's between the percentages. Now I can click on this name because that's really what I care about. I can add them to display, save it, and now if I run, sometimes the add to display doesn't always work, but even if I run, I'll be creating four files and one and two, and three. Unclear why you percent name. Your name should be Jan, March, or Feb. I'll have to see if this is like an alias problem or what the deal is. Yeah, it seems like ArcPro is being a weird